when we do tastings at uh, shows and whatever, and some we do out of state, and they say, where's your winery? We say, Connecticut. People will say, Connecticut? So then after a while, I started telling them, I said, they asked me where, where we're from. I said, we're from the Echo State. He said, where's the Echo State? I said, Connecticut. Connecticut. I said, I told you. <laughs> you know, you come into Bradley Airport and you don't, you know, Connecticut is for what? It's the nutmeg state. What, is, what does that mean? I don't, I don't know, personally. <laughs> I mean, I know we used to grow tobacco, and, but you go to Virginia and Virginia's for lovers and you go to Maryland and it's all about, you know, blue crab. Everybody knows that that's what they produce and that's what they do well. When I started getting interested in wine, I went town over. And I walked in and I he said, can I help you? I said, I'm looking for some good California wine. He said, well, you came to the right, stop, right shop. I have good wine and I have California wine. Now, nobody would say that today, but this is 1970s. And this was the mentality. California wine was cheap wine. You know, we'd like to think that the farm wine industry will help people understand that Connecticut is a wine growing, wine producing region of its own. In the San Joaquin Valley of California, that's some of the most fertile ground in the world. You can grow just about anything there. In Connecticut, we have a cool climate for growing grapes, whereas California is considered a warm climate. Those traditional wine grape growing regions are characterized by very arid growing seasons. And in the eastern United States, uh, we have warm, humid growing seasons. The uh, year we opened, Someone from the Hartford Current called my wife and asked what we're growing, and she told him Mignol and Cabernet Franc, et cetera, et cetera. And he called back about an hour later and says, I looked up where you are. You can't grow Cabernet Franc where you are. Everyone has to contend with our very cold winters. If, if you don't control those, you really cannot grow grapes in the eastern United States. We've had hailstorms. We've had a number of bad frost happening in May. Well, in one year we had temperatures down to 14 below two nights in a row and we probably lost 90 percent of our fruit. In a really severe winter, it'll kill everything above the soil line. Once, once the, gra the grapevines are hit by frost, that's it. It's over for the season. But people have a misconception that you can't grow certain things. You certainly can. If you, if you do it right. We have built the fires in the vineyard and you know, did everything just like in the movies to, uh, to create heat in the vineyard to save it from the frost, staying up all night, you know, watching the fires. We picked the site because of the hill. The cold air rolls down the hill and therefore we don't really have a, a, a frost problem in the spring and we have a much longer growing season because we don't get frost here till after. And this is probably one of the wetter areas in the world where they grow grapes. Very often they grow grapes in almost desert-like areas. If you grow grapes in a desert, you're going to get much higher concentration of sugar and a much lower concentration of acidity. If you have no acidity in wine, it tastes kind of like water. You want it to be crisp and clean. And East Coast grapes are much more adaptable to that kind of climate. The soil and the climate in this part of Connecticut, or this part of New England actually, is similar to all the Alsatian region. So it's identical to northern France and Germany. So we've got rich gravelly soil. We have, in this particular area of Colchester, we have a kind of a warm belt that comes off, being off 15 miles off the coastline. People are realizing that, and there are a lot more people getting interested. The business model for Connecticut wineries is not so much getting your wines into the package stores, but it's basically getting people to visit the winery. I mean, it's, worked very well with the locavore movement that's become very popular. We want to deliver the experience that goes with the wine that makes the wine taste better. And we know that when people taste our wine here on the property, it, it tastes better than it would taste if they plucked it off the shelf, you know, next to Yellowtail. You can get a cheaper bottle of wine than we sell our wine for, but you see the guys out there pruning and you talk to Mario upstairs and you know who he is and he can tell you where to go you know, for dinner.
It's definitely different when it's because it's fresher when you get it from um, like a local place, like it, whether it's here or any other local vineyard because it's grown right here. I feel like I like these wines way better than anything I ever buy at the store from yeah, like yeah. They're always, California. Like, yeah, always better. The, you know, it is one of the, if not the most rapidly expanding aspects of Connecticut agriculture. Actually, we were number seven, and that was in 2003. There's now 32. Generally, we get two or three new farm wineries every year. You can make good wine here in Connecticut. If people work, work hard at it and they grow the right varieties, you can definitely make good wine.